So five five is called multiple angle and product to sum formulas, and those are actually the two formulas that we're not going to talk about. We're going to talk about double and half angles. Okay. Um, if you think about a double and a half angle, this is kind of like the sum and difference. If I gave you the sum was 195, you couldn't use your circle to find it, so you would break it down into a sum of two angles that were on your unit circle that you could find. So the idea is that a double angle, so something that's doubled that you, is not on your unit circle, you could cut in half to find what it is using the formula. And then the other way around, something like 15, okay? 15 degrees is not on your unit circle, but if you double it and use the double angle formulas, okay? you could find it using 30 degrees. So those are the, that's the concept behind what we're gonna talk about today. So the first one, and all of these formulas are gonna be given to you. The first one is the double angle formulas. So this is gonna help you find the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of twice an angle. But the way we use these is with triangles. So you're gonna get one, there's one type of problem with the double, well there's two problems on your quiz, but this, there's only one type of problem based on the double angle formulas, okay? But again, you'll be given all these formulas on the quiz. So sine of 2u equals 2 sine cosine. Cosine of 2u, there's three options, and you can use either one, okay? So it's either cosine squared minus sine squared, or 2 cosine squared minus 1, or 1 minus 2 cosine squared. The second two come from the Pythagorean identity, like if you replace one with the other, that's where those second two come from. And then tangent of 2u is 2u over, or over 1 minus tangent squared u. So if you want to screenshot this and pull it in your homework, you can. You're going to get given this exact picture. Okay. Now you just got to figure out how to use it. So it says, find the exact values of sine 2u and cosine 2u and tangent 2u if you're given that the tangent of u is 3 over 5 and that u is in between 0 and pi over 2. So every time you've gotten given a ratio for a like tangent, sine, or cosine, what do you typically do for, with that? How do you do it? Good. Try to create your triangle. So you're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to put u in the corner, 3 and 5. And then I've got to find my missing side. Is that a triple? Careful. It's not, right? Because that's not on your... Hypotenuse, the five would have to be on your hypotenuse. So I would do three squared plus five squared or nine plus 25, which is 34. And this is the square root of 34. Second piece of information they give you is that u is in between zero and two and pi over two. What does that tell you? They're all positive because it's in the first quadrant. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah? Okay. Now, I've got my triangle. I've got the signs. Now I go to the formulas. So I'm going to start with sine of 2u. And again, if you go back, what's the sign? How do I find the equation? Or what's the equation for sine of 2u? 2 sine u plus, or times cosine u. So I do 2 times the sine of u. So using that triangle, what's the sine? 3 over root 34. So you don't have to rationalize it yet because you'll see what's going to happen in a moment is we're going to multiply a root times a root, which will eliminate it. So save yourself the work. The cosine of u is what? 5 over root 34. And then I would multiply out my numerators. 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30 over root 34 times root 34, which is what? 34. So this gets reduced to 15 over 17. And that's the sine of 2u. OK, then I'm going to find cosine of 2u. And I'll tell you, I typically pick the first equation because when you square it, it gets rid of the square root on the denominator, and then you have two, two um, fractions with the same denominator already. But they are totally interchangeable. You can pick either one of them. Okay, So if you pick the first one, it says what? 
Good. Cosine squared u minus sine squared u. So the cosine we said was 5 over 30, root 34 squared minus the sine, which is 3 over root 34 squared. And I get 25 over 34 minus 9 over 34, which is 16 over 34. Or 8 over 17. Okay, and then the last one is tangent of 2u. And there's actually two ways to find it. What's one way to find tangent? Outside of a double angle or a half angle formula. Sine over cosine. So if I already had the sine over the cosine, I could just do sine over cosine, keep change flip, reduce it. But I'll tell you right now, like on your quiz, you're only going to get asked for one of these three. So you're not going to have to build one, build the other, and then use it. So I'm going to go straight from scratch and start from the equation, okay? So the tangent of 2u, what's my equation? So 2... times 3 fifths over 1 minus 3 fifths squared. Multiply out my numerator and I get 6 fifths. This becomes 1 minus 9 20 fifths. And I have to change this so it's 25 over 25. And my denominator becomes 16 over 25. And then keep change flip 25 over 16. 5 goes into 25 5 times. This is 3. This is 8. And I get 15 over 8 for tangent of 2u. Okay, so again, these will get given to you, but these are for your half angle formulas. So the first, we're going to use these two ways. The first is with angles that are not in my unit circle, but that, that angle times 2 is. Okay? And I would use each of these formulas. Sine of u over 2 equals plus and minus the square root of 1 minus cosine over 2. Cosine of u over 2 plus and minus the square root of 1 plus cosine over 2. And then tangent, and you can pick either one of those. 1 minus cosine over sine or sine over 1 plus cosine. And the plus or minus is determined by you by knowing where the original half angle is. So if the original half angle falls in the first quadrant, they're both positive. Second quadrant, cosine would be negative, sine would be positive. Third quadrant, they're both negative. And fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive and the sine is negative. You don't have to assign a sine to tangent. Tangent involves both the cosine and the sine, so it does it for you. Okay, But the ones that you have to figure out are you um, sine and cosine. Again, where the original angle lies is where you would get the sine from. Let's start with 75. So this says use half angle formulas to determine the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle. So we just said 75, okay? Initially, 75 lies where? First quadrant. So this one's in my first quadrant, which means when I get to the end of my answer, whatever I have for sine, I'm going to make sure it's positive. Whatever I have for cosine, I'm going to make sure it's positive. You don't have to worry about tangent. It corrects itself. But because 75 is in the first quadrant, I need to make sure that sine and cosine are positive at the end. You with me so far? Yeah? Okay. So what I am going to use for these, if this is my u over 2, so if this is my half angle, then I have to use 2, which is what? u is going to be double that, right? What would be u? 150. So when I go to find the sine of u over 2... I get 1 minus cosine of u over 2. And I said it's plus or minus, and this time we know this is going to be plus because 75 lies in the first quadrant. So at 150, and again, you'll get given a unit circle, but at 150, my coordinate is negative root 3 over 2 and 1 half. 
So when I do square root of one minus the cosine of that angle, which would be what? Negative root three over two, over two. And then from there I reduce. So this becomes two over two minus a negative becomes positive. I get two plus root three all over two. And all of that is over the two on the bottom and underneath the square root. And then I would do keep change flip. So that would get multiplied by a half. And I end up with the square root of two plus root three over four. And then I split that. And simplify the root four. And again, at the beginning we said sine would be positive, so I'm gonna leave that positive. And again, it's plus or minus, but we already said that the cosine would be positive because the 75 lies in the first quadrant. So this is also gonna be a positive square root of one plus cosine of u over two. So I get the square root of one plus a negative root three over two, because that's what the cosine there is, over two. Change the one to two over two. I get the square root of two minus root three over two, all over two. I do keep change flip to get rid of the two in the bottom. And I get the square root of two minus root three over four. Split the square root. And simplify the square root of four. And again, we said keep it positive because that 75 would have been in the first quadrant. Okay, and then the last one is the tangent of 2u. This time I don't have to pick the positive or negative sign. However, there's two options for tangent. I'm just going to go with the first one. So 1 minus cosine u over sine u. I don't really think there's advantage of one over the other. Oh, I'm sorry, you over two. All right. So now I get one minus the cosine, which is still negative root three over two, over the sine, which is a positive one half. So change this so it has a like denominator. This would be two minus a negative three becomes plus three. Two plus root three over two, all over one half. Keep, change, flip, those cancel. And I get two plus root three. I did that over here too. This should be u over two. So again, you're not gonna get given like all three in one question. You'll get them separated out. So it might just ask for one of them. It might just ask for sine, it might just ask for cosine, it might just ask for tangent. But the angle you'll be given is going to be half of something that's on your unit circle. So something like 75, that when you double it, it's 150. But the plus or minus, so how you figure out the positive or negative sign on the end of sine and cosine, remember, comes from your initial angle. So it might be given to you in radians. Like if you look at B, 5 pi over 12, 
You have to figure out where that's located on your unit circle to figure out if it's supposed to be positive or negative. And again, these are going to be angles that aren't on your unit circle. So if I think about where 5 pi over 12 is, I can't just look at my unit circle and find that angle. Does that make sense? So I have to think, where does that locate it? 5 over 12, is that bigger than a half or smaller than a half? That's smaller than a half. So a half pi would be at my 90 degrees. You with me? That means that this would fall in that first quadrant. So again, it would be positive sine and positive cosine. Okay? And then if I wanted to go through and find u over 2, so if u over 2 is 5 pi over 12, how do I get to u? Double it. Double it. So I'd multiply by 2, and I get 5 pi over 6. Five pi over six is 150. So everything from here on out would have been the same. And if the radians totally throws you, like if you can't locate five pi over 12 in your unit circle to know if it's supposed to be positive or negative, convert it to, to degrees. You get the same thing. Questions on the half angle. So let's say that my angle was actually 5 pi over 8. And that's my half angle. So where is that located? Second quadrant, right? 5 over 8 is a little bit bigger than 1 half, which means it's going to be in the second quadrant. This would be in quadrant 2, which means that my sine would be positive but my cosine is going to be negative. And what would be my u? What would be my doubled angle? So if this is u over 2, 5 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. The point there is root negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. And so I would complete each of those equations now using... to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent.
All right, so again, when I doubled it, I got that u was 5 pi over 4, and the angle there would be in the third quadrant, and it's your over 4, which means the root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Third quadrant, they're both negative. So I did 1 minus cosine over 2, and I got root 2 plus root 2, or the square root of 2 plus root 2 over 2. And we said that in that th second quadrant, which is where 5 pi, eight, 5 pi over 8 would be, that it, sine would be positive. So I kept a positive. Cosine in that second quadrant is negative, which means that blue at the end would have been negative. And I, this time I would do 1 plus negative root 2 over 2 all over 2. Keep change flip. Combine it so they have the same denominator. And I get negative the square root of 2 minus root 2 over. Oh, that should be 2 because you're square rooting 4. This should be 2. And then the last one is tangent, so I don't have to worry about the sign, but it is 1 minus cosine, so 1 minus a negative root 2 over 2 becomes 1 plus root 2 over 2. Change 1, so it's 2 over 2. I get 2 plus root 2 all over 2 divided by the sign, which is negative root 2 over 2. Keep, change, flip, and the 2s cancel, but it makes it negative. And then I had to rationalize because I had a square root of 2 in the bottom, so I multiply both the top and the bottom by root 2. I got 2 root 2 plus 2 over 2. And all that gets simplified. There's a lot of root twos going on there. Christian. So how did you decide that the, the cosine of u over 2 was negative and the other one was positive? In the initial question, so I gave you 5 pi over 8 this time, you have to figure out where that's located on your circle. So 5 pi over 8, 5 over 8 is a little bit bigger than a half pi, but not, big, not bigger than 1 pi, right? So it's in between pi over 2 and pi, which puts it in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, sine's positive, but cosine's negative. So it's based off the original? Based off the original angle, yep. Questions on any of the this first one? Okay, so then the last thing is using the half angles for triangles. So kind of like what we did at the beginning, but there's a little bit of a catch here, and I'll explain what it is, okay? But this is now half angle. So it says determine the quadrant in which u over 2 lies and then find the exact values of u over 2, sine of u over 2, cosine u over 2, tangent u over 2 using the half angle formulas. So the first thing it asks for is which quadrant u over 2 lies in. And that determines my positive or negative on the end, right? That's why I need to know that. What it does tell me is that u, which is the doubled angle, lies between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So what quadrant does my double angle lie in? Quadrant 4. So if I took an angle that was in quadrant 4 and I cut it in half, where's it going to lie? Pick an angle in quadrant 4, like an easy one, like 300, right? What happens when you cut 300 in half? It's in quadrant 2. How about 280? What happens when you cut 280 in half? 140, right? Where's that? Quadrant 2. So if your doubled angle lies in quadrant 4, your half angle lies in quadrant 2, okay? So if you think about what's happening there, anything that's in, so if the double angle, if you, if you, is in quadrant 4, then u over 2, which is your half angle, is in quadrant 2. And I need to know that to pick the positive or negative on the sine and the cosine. What would have happened if it was in quadrant 3? So pick an angle that's easy in quadrant 3, like 200. What happens if I cut 200 in half? It's 100. Where's that? Quadrant 2. How about 240? 240 is also in quadrant 3. What happens when I cut that in half? 120. Where's 120? Quadrant 2. So it also happens for quadrant 3. For quadrant 4 and quadrant 3, if you cut the angle in half, it goes to quadrant 2. What about quadrant 2? So give me a measurement of an angle in between 90 and 180. 120. If I cut 120 in half, what happens to it? 60 first quadrant. 200. I'm sorry, not 200. 100. What happens if I cut 100 in half? 50 first quadrant. So if it's in quadrant 2 then u over 2 is in quadrant 1. What about if it's in quadrant 1 and I cut it in half? Can you get smaller than quadrant 1? No. So if it's in quadrant 1, the half is also in quadrant 1.
So if the original angle or the doubled angle, sorry, is in three or four, then the half angle is in two. If it's in two, then it's in one. And if it's in one, then it's in one. And they're going to give you where the doubled angle lies, but not where the half angle lies. So again, this told me that this was in the third quadrant, or sorry, the fourth quadrant, which means U, for this question, U is in quadrant two. And that tells me that my sine is gonna be positive, but my cosine is gonna be negative. That makes sense? Questions on that? But the rest of it's easy. The rest of it is triangle based. So I draw a triangle. I put U in the corner. Five over 12, opposite over adjacent. And then I rely on the location of this angle to tell me which of those is the negative. So if this is in quadrant four, what's positive, what's negative? Sine is positive, right? No, sorry, cosine is positive, sine is negative, which means my x is positive or my horizontal is positive, but my sine, which is my five, is the one that gets the negative. What's the missing side here? 13, that's a triple. And now I've got all the information I need to find my half angles. So the sine of u over 2, and we said the sine would be positive, so I make sure I make a note to remind myself that it's positive, would be 1 minus cosine. Over 2, the cosine which we said is going to be negative, 1 plus cosine, u over 2, and the tangent, and again I'm going to pick the first one, 1 minus cosine u over sine u, and then I just got to plug it in. So this is the square root of 1 minus the cosine, which is 12 over 13, over 2. This changes to 13 over 13. I get the square root of 1 over 13, all over 2. Keep change flip, and I get the square root of 1 over 26. Square root of 1, which is 1, over square root 26, which gets rationalized to root 26 over 26. Questions on that one? Okay, then the cosine is negative. 1 plus 12 over 13 over 2, negative 13 over 13, plus 12 over 13, which is 25 over 13, over 2, keep change flip, negative 25 over 26, which is the square root of 25 over square root 26, negative 5, root 26 over 26. And then the last one is tangent. So 1 minus 12 over 13 over the sine, which is negative 5 over 13. This becomes 13 over 13, 1 over 13 over negative 5 over 13, or keep, change, flip, and I get negative 1 fifth.
which I would have also gotten from sine over cosine, but remember, you're not going to get them all three. You're going to get just like one of those three. Questions on any of the three different types of problems? Taylor. From the beginning, how did you know that we were in quadrant two? So they gave me that the doubled angle was in between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, which puts it in the fourth quadrant. Okay. If I cut anything from the fourth quadrant in half, it's in the second quadrant. So the first thing you want to do is say, where's, where's my half angle? Take your doubled angle, cut it in half, where would it be? If you don't know the value, then you have to think anything in the fourth quadrant, right, which you're not going to know a value. Anything in the fourth goes to the second. Anything in the third goes to the second. And anything in the second goes to the first. The first stays in the first. So that's the first thing. And if that, like, is the most confusing thing on the planet to you and you screw up the sign, it is such a minute part of the value of, the, like, the points on this question that do not let it freak you out. Don't, like, get hung up on it and not be able to move past it. You can still do the entire problem and then not have a negative and only lose a couple of points. Whereas if you get hung up on it, you work yourself up about it and you can't do any of it. It's a totally different – well, the rest of it is literally plugging into an equation. Find, using the Pythagorean theorem or, or a triple to find the missing side and then plugging into an equation. So three different types. The first one was the double angle with a triangle. The second one's a half angle with the actual angle measurement where you use your unit circle. And the third one is the half angle with um, your triangle like this one. Um, is there an SOR just so it will be on the midterm, but it's only on the quiz. So if you're exempt, you're not going to see it on a, on a physical test but it's on tomorrow's quiz. Um, questions? Again, overall, everybody's okay? So I published your homework and I wrote non-graded. Somebody in the last class confused that with you don't have to do it. I wouldn't advise that. Like, it's a really interesting concept considering you have a quiz on this stuff tomorrow. It means I'm giving you the answers ahead of time, so I'm not going to grade it. So I put, like, the odds are already obviously on there, but I'm going to post the evens too. Tomorrow when we come into class, I'll go over questions on that homework. We'll do the warm-up together. And then the second part of class, you're going to take a quiz on this stuff. Everybody's good? Yes. The quiz is five questions.